Hello everyone, welcome to this channel. In today's video we talk about breech babies, in particular in which ways we have to try to get a baby to turn from breech to cephalic. So let's go into the video to know more. Hello future or current parents, welcome to this channel. If you're new here, my name is Ilania and I'm a midwife. I currently live and work in the United Kingdom. Today's video is the second part of a series dedicated to breech babies. So if you've not done so already, stop this video and go check out the first part. I'm gonna link it here because we talk about breech babies and why babies might be prone into stay in this position, what are the reasons behind it, what are the risks, which type of birth you can have, so it's very important that you check that video first. In this video we're going to focus into some techniques that we can use to turn a baby from breech to cephalic. And why we want to do that? If you don't know already, the cephalic presentation is the best to achieve optimal vaginal birth is the safest for you and for baby. Um, some babies are born breech anyway, but if we try our best to, to get to the best option for, for, for you, for your body and for your baby, which is a cephalic vaginal birth, then it would be ideal. Maybe you can prevent um, a cesarean section, you, can, you cannot have a cesarean section, and then you can get a normal cephalic vaginal birth. Those techniques are quite safe. I do want you to take check with your provider first uh, if you can do them, if you have any contraindication because they know better your medical situation. Usually though, as a rule of thumb, if you feel lightheaded or dizzy while you do these things, or if you feel any type of pain, obviously stop and reevaluate and try to change and not do that procedure anymore. Just for recap, a breech baby is a baby that is presenting their bottom at the entrance of the pelvis. They can do it in different ways, with the knees, with the feet, but generally they will present their butt cheeks at the entrance of the pelvis So we, because they find it more comfortable. So the rationale behind these movements is to make baby uncomfortable so that they'll be able to hopefully turn. And to get them upside down, you need yourself to go upside down and I'll show you how. I've put on my fake belly just so it's easier for you to um, understand this position. So the first technique I'm going to show you, you have to lay yourself into a carpet, a mat, a yoga mat, whatever you have, and point your feet on the ground, nice and steady, laying back and lift your bum up. You can do so by being supported with pillows, as many as you can find, you need to be as higher as you can. If you can even bring this position forward, you could point the feet to like a surface, like something that, like a, a, like a steep, something that will elevate you and lift up and stay in this position as long as you can tolerate it. This is because a baby that is breech in this position should kind of hit the upper part of your uterus, find them comfortable and therefore be prone to change hopefully and rotate cephalic. If you can't do that, don't worry, you can also go up and down in this position. Just try your best to make your uterus the most like uncomfortable place for baby, especially the upper part. Another thing that you can do to bring these even up to our next level is called forward leaning inversion. And I love this position in general with all the pregnancies. I find it that it helps to relieve and stretch the lower part of the pelvis for a breech baby is even more beneficial and I'll show you how to do it. You need like the, the edge of the bed or, or, a, or a couch like this one. You put yourself at the end of it and then slowly, um, maybe for the first time you might need someone to help you, but anyway, slowly you put your hands down, you bring them a little bit far away from the, from the edge of the, of the sofa in this case, and then you point your elbows down. And you try to stay in this position for as long as you can tolerate it again. And slowly you come up. And by doing that for even two, three times a day, for two, three minutes a day, then hopefully your baby will be inclined to turn cephalic. Other things that you can try are, for example, putting a, um, a bag of frozen vegetables, something cold on top of your uterus. This is where the baby's head usually is. Mm -hmm. 
in this way they'll try to get away from the cold source and hopefully then therefore rotate maybe they just need a little nudge to turn sideways and therefore cephalic another way that you can try is by pointing a bright light generally into the area where the baby's face is and the same ration that the shoe kind of turn and same if you try with voices or music just to get them away from that point again those things are not proven to work but they might be fun to do and it's definitely worth a shot i mean they're completely harmless other things that you can try that they're harmless that they're not very evidence-based but they definitely have a rationale behind it are um, acupuncture and moxa those are two techniques that promote relaxation and as i was saying before relaxing the uterus and the pelvis is so important and sometimes it's more than enough to get a baby to turn also worth a shot to do a visit or more with an osteopath someone that is able to align some diameters and some things that need to be readjusted what do you do if all of these fails if you try them all and your baby still won't turn and you're getting approach and close to your due date there's something else that you can try especially if your provider does it and they suggest it to you because you're a good candidate which is the ANECV which stands for external cephalic version this is when through the hands externally a baby will be rotated from breech to cephalic is a procedure that is done with you and baby being monitored usually a medication is given to you in order to relax the uterus just so it doesn't contract as you do it and it's 50 percent successful therefore it might be worth a shot obviously i can't decide for yourself and it needs to be offer to you you can ask as well if you're a good candidate usually you're not a good candidate if you have a placenta that is anterior but generally speaking is is quite safe there are risks involved and you need to know them to to give a proper informed consent the major risk associated with an ecb is the placenta rupture meaning a placenta that starts to separate because of the procedure and that's a that's an emergency a major emergency that needs immediate delivery and in that case will be by a cesarean birth Another risk that can happen is that your water break or that you go into labor and, and therefore this is usually done as a last resource at 36-37 weeks for that reason just so baby is, is ready to come out in case of emergency uh, but you need to know that are those risks minimal but the risk associated with an ECV. If you tried all of that and your baby still won't turn, don't worry, breach is a variation of normality. It means that your baby is meant to stay breached for some reasons that we might never know, and that's fine as well. Let me know in the comments if you know any other technique to turn a breech baby, and it's all for this video. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.